How does Portugal influence author Irene Marks writing? Today on All About Canadian Books, we're going to ask her. But before we do, if you love books and the stories behind them, be sure to hit that subscribe button in the corner of your screen. Author interviews are posted bi-weekly, Tuesdays and Thursdays, the second and fourth week of every month. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to All About Canadian Books. I'm so thrilled to have author Irene Marks as my guest this week. Irene is a writer, poet, scholar, and educator. She believes in the power of literature and creative language to allow us to broaden our sense of self, others, and otherness giving us a more fulfilling existential experience. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, Irene. Thank you, Crystal, for, for the invitation. Oh, my pleasure. So, Irene, you have written this incredible book, Daria, which is what we'll be chatting about today. It's published by Anana. Can you tell us what Daria is about? Um, so I pronounce it Daria. I, oh. I, prefer the, I prefer the open vowel. Um, oh, and, I love that. I'm so and, sorry. No, Daria. that's fine. And that's how I think it's actually related to the Portuguese language. Uh, but I like open vowels. I think they extend the words. Um, yeah. So, um, so I, I mean, this novel is about, um, sorry, I forgot the question now that I... <laughs> No, that's okay. I was just wondering if you could tell us what the novel is about. Yeah, so the novel uh, on a first level is about the life of Daria, this young uh, Portuguese woman uh, girl who immigrates from Portugal at the age of 20. But then this, the, the, the book brings in many other narratives. So as Daria tells her story, she brings in many other narratives that involve uh, uh, many other characters, many other temporal spaces. So we have scenes that span from the 16th century to the, the uh, 21st century. We have scenes that take place in Canada, in Portugal, uh, Cape Verde, uh, Mozambique. So uh, there, there, there is a wide variety of stories within that story. Uh, there is a focus a little bit, of course, uh, on the multicultural scene of Toronto or Canada as well. So this, the, the novel is multifaceted in that sense, even though on a first level, it seems to be only about Daria, but in fact, it brings in many other narratives and characters. And I like books that do that because we are all connected to one another. And um, I like to bring as much as I can the world to the page of, of a book that I'm writing. Mm -hmm. And you did. I really appreciated all the different stories that were woven through. I loved that. Now, how, how did this concept come to you? Um, so I think I, I, in some ways I answered that before. I, I like writing that uh, is um, multifaceted. So I wanted to write a novel that in some ways included the life of a young Portuguese girl who immigrated to Canada, which is obviously partly myself. That, yes. was, that is what happened to me. Uh, so I wanted to include that personal level, level of storytelling there. But then I also wanted to bring in many other stories uh, related to, to the world, to Canada, to Portuguese colonial past, um, and to feminism. Um, so, um, there, there is a link between the personal and the collective, which I think is always a trait of my writing. Um, uh, so, I mean, in that sense, the novel is not different from my other writing, I think. But, but it does have more layers of narrative and, you know, it's divided in different uh, sections. And, and in fact, there is a novel inside the novel called The Idea Against Terrafal, which is a novel written by the anti- uh, colonial combatant, the Mozambican, who is fighting Portuguese colonialism. So uh, in that sense, this novel is unique. So th there is that other novel inside the main novel. And Daria is having a relationship with the, 
with that character who writes the novel inside the novel. So then she comes across that novel. So it's placed there. Mm -hmm. And it also relates to issues of uh, the Portuguese colonialism in Africa. So I wanted to also have attempt to have the voice of an African there speak mm -hmm. uh, from that perspective, even though, of course, I am not African or I'm not a male, but I think uh, it's my area of research and I've done enough research on it or a lot of research. And uh, so I wanted to bring multiple perspectives um, in that sense. Mm -hmm. Were you um, always a, a, an admirer of history? Uh, I, I was, so I'm, I'm very interested in historical uh, fiction, but historical fiction that is creative. So, I mean, I don't yes. want to necessarily read a dry historical novel. So <laughs> I think yeah. magical realism, historical novels appeal to me. So I, I think that Daria does uh, fit into in that category. And I, I think it's described as such in, uh, um, in the book. I mean, uh, so yes, history, but also with another perspective, adding that creative perspective, because if I want to read just about historical facts, I mean, I will write, read a history book or write one, yeah. uh, but fiction adds a, another dimension that it's, uh, well, does many other things. Uh, it, it can be creative in language and structure, which usually historical books have to be objective, <laughs> although that, is yeah. really impossible. And you have characters in a, in a novel that, that uh, allow you to connect uh, uh, more with what, it, what the subject matter that is being discussed. Yeah. If I have a character that experiences uh, colonialism or, or uh, racism or sexism, then you know, if I create a character and, and have that character in a novel, the reader can connect better than if I talk about those subject matters in a historical book. Um, so I think fiction has a greater capacity to penetrate the reader at, at a, on a deeper level um, and uh, humanize people that in history often are not humanized, are just numbers. Um, yeah, yes. And, um, and is, I mean, fiction also allows you to play with language and structure, which a typical academic history book <laughs> does not. So, um, yes. Now, you had mentioned, Irene, that very similar to your um, Daria, you both came to Canada when you were 20. And reading your novel, you know, you just get this wonderful connection or almost a string that pulls you back to Portugal. Was that really important for, to you to include that attachment to your first country, first country in your novel? Yes, because obviously, uh, I mean, I spent the first 20 years of my life there. So the, the attachment, there is a strong emotional attachment. Uh, I came here by myself. So, uh, you know, the visits to my parents, especially my parents and my siblings uh, were important. And, and there is a deep connection with, with the country and the family. And so I wanted to bring that up in the novel. And the novel also deals with the passing of my father. Yes. Uh, so those are obviously important marking events, and I wanted to bring it up in the novel to establish that uh, complexity uh, of the character. Uh, you know, the character has many affiliations, and it's a multidimensional character. So I, I did find that important. Um, yeah, I could really feel that as a reader that Daria had one foot in Canada and you know one in one in Portugal. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, now I have to say I'm always I have such an admiration admiration for a writer and and you write in two languages <laughs> like you read and write in Portuguese as well as English um, so how do you how do you where do you feel that you, that you best express yourself is it a combination of both languages is it in your first language what would you say I think at this point, I, I, I would say that I feel pretty comfortable writing in both languages. And I actually think that uh, one language helps the other go further. So, uh, and I, I'm actually writing an article, an academic article about this, how I think it's important for writers, whether they write in English or Portuguese or French to read 
in other languages if they can or read in translation because you you uh, when you read a book that comes from another language whether directly or indirectly you are pushed to to see the world in a different way and you are pushed to, to develop your own mother tongue um, in a different way and and uh, you know manipulate language differently so I think that is very important uh, so I have this theory that if you have access to both languages you can be more creative you know in both in each of those languages mm -hmm. because one is informing the other um so that's a theory that i have and that i write about um that that's that's incredible because i have days where i can't find the word in english so i i'm just i really admire that do you dream in and what language do you dream in or is it a combination as well um I think it's a combination, but you know, I have this dream. I have this recurrent dream, which I find very powerful. I am dreaming and I'm flying and those flying dreams are amazing. Yes. And I'm singing and I can't really sing, but the singing <laughs> alternates between English and Portuguese. And actually I think the singing signifies writing for me. Ah. So then I'm flying and sometimes I will say, oh, I can't fly any further. And then I, another voice will tell me, yes, you can. So I continue flying and I continue um, singing or speaking, which symbolizes writing and, and switching from one language to the other. So I think that dream is uh, tells something about my own process of, of writing and creating. And also writing for me is a highly spiritual act. So I think that dream really encapsulates this, this connection between writing and spirituality and musicality, even though I can't sing in, in <laughs> real life. Uh, but I think my writing actually is very musical. Oh, so, I love yes. that. Yeah. I love that. Now, you'd mentioned that you were working on a scholarly, a scholarly article. Um, are you working on another novel as well? Or So, yes, I'm always working on something creative. So currently, I, I'm... Uh, I'm working on an article related to this idea of, uh, you know, Canadian literature going beyond what I call the Anglo-Saxon ethic and aesthetic, um, because I think Canada still, and, and the Anglo-American world has a specific ethic and aesthetic that I think is uh, obviously related to, to the Anglophone culture, and that tends to privilege certain types of writing that may be more literal, uh, that use less flowery language. So I'm, I'm trying to argue for something else in Canada because Canada is a multicultural country. Yeah. Then I'm working on, um, on a manuscript uh, uh, that has been accepted by Purdue University. I mean, the abstract has been accepted that it's a literary analysis of different novels. Uh, so that's the academic side. And then I'm uh, currently editing a, a, langu a novel that I wrote in Portuguese quite a few years ago. Uh -huh. And I'm working on a collection of poetry in English, um, but I'm teaching a lot currently, so it's not always easy to do everything. I say, Irene, do you sleep? <laughs> yes, uh, last two nights ago I went to bed at four, so yeah, you know, sometimes it's hard. Oh, but I do like I like the multiplicity of tasks that I have to perform. I think it it allows me to it pushes myself, and it. Uh, you know, it, I hope it makes me better. And, uh, you know, uh, by having to, uh, I do different things and I, you know, the academic versus the creative writing and the variety of courses that I teach continuously demand that I learn new things. And I think that's important as a human being for you to continuously learn uh, something that is not familiar to you, that is outside of your own cultural background. I think that's fundamental. Mm, how wonderful. So Irene Marks, a great big thank you for being a guest this week on All About Canadian Books and chatting about your novel, Daria. Highly recommend it. So thank you. I will put links down below so our viewers can visit your website, um, check out your poetry, your academic writing, and also purchase a copy of D Daria. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Crystal, very much. Thank you. And thank you to everyone for watching. Be sure to come back in a couple of weeks. Thank you.